feeding fish is always fun even if it's just the goldfish in your pond but if you're a fisherman you probably want to catch these but we're not going to do that here that wouldn't be fair we're going to go to a carp fishery in Berkshire it's a highly intensive one and the carp is one of the most popular and most sought after freshwater fish in the British Isles but to catch those we're not going to be using pond food we're going to be using some different bait here we are in the tackle shop uh, in Fleet, it's called Tackle Up, which is pretty ironic. Um, it's with Nigel Newport, the manager of Tackle Up, who's a specialist uh, carp fishing and match fishing tackle shop. He's going to run through some baits. And Nigel, I know they use boilies. What is the best boilie, is there such a thing as a best boilie or best flavour? What's your advice or experience on what people are using today? There's a, a, a great range of flavours. Um, some flavours have proved more popular than other ones, yeah. different lakes. Uh, different situations but some of the traditional uh, flavours which uh, I've started using probably yourself sort of 30 years ago uh, sort of Scopex, uh, Tutti Frutti um, and then more sort of spicy ones have come in the last sort of 10 years You've got tuna, chilli, um, a variety of uh, small particles have been used as well to complement the boilies um, so the boilies fished over a bed of smaller particles like hemp, uh, maize, um, sweet corn, uh, even maggots have been very successful by some of the top carp anglers. So traditionally Nige, those boilies up there, is that about the average size that people uh, find popular? 15 mils are very popular size, um, people use them for bream, tench, carp, everything really. Um, some waters where there are problems with people catching lots of bream uh, they may use a bigger bait, like even up to 24, 26 mil bait. So roughly how much volume do you um, sell for here like, on these boilies? The volume of bait depends on the time of year. Um, some people buy bigger bags, but we could sell you know, 10 of these bags in a week. Um, we could sell 50 smaller bags, sort of half kilo to a kilo bags. Um, it does vary throughout the year. Uh, different colours, catch anglers as well as they do fish, uh, calibre pellets, much bigger pellet that we can use for carp, uh, barbel fishing as well now, um, different flavours, different make, pineapple, uh, sooty fruity to match with the flavour of the boilies also, um, pellets used by match anglers, uh, pleasure anglers, the whole lot. Now, as I understand it, Nige, whether it's fashion or what, I don't know. The carp anglers are now tend to be, perhaps, are they tending to go towards small baits, getting towards what we used to call particle saturation years ago? I mean, what's the sort of trend at the present time? Smaller baits tend to keep the fish moving around in the swim and uh, keep them preoccupied, you know, looking for maybe a bigger bait over the top, um, like maggots are excellent bait. Well here we are in a bait store of Tackle Up, uh, where Nigel carries a huge amount of uh, maggots. Nigel, tell us what's in there. Um, well in our fridges we carry quite a large amount of bait, um, up to about probably about 40-50 gallon at a time. Uh, that amount decreases as you go into autumn winter time. Um, the fridges are kept to keep the bait chilled, uh, we turn our own casters. Um, from white maggots and got a variety of coloured maggots in here as well. Some anglers prefer reds and whites are the most popular colours but there's bronze and pink and blues and greens and stuff like that. Caster maggots are turned from white maggots so they're all sort of brown in colour, creamy colour. Uh, it roughly takes about 10 days uh, for the casters to turn. If you can turn them in the fridge you get a much bigger cast that doesn't shrink in size and also they become a nice sort of crisp shell to them. Um, and once they start to turn they then put over the riddles which then separates the caster. Give it a little shape. Maggots go through uh, once they warm up and we're left with the casters on top. When the bait's stored, the maggots do die at various stages, so you get waste product. Uh, to clean the bait up, this is uh, specially built in the tackle trade for sieving maggots, get rid of sawdust or maize. Put the maggots in the top here, machine's turned on, plate vibrates, the old sawdust goes through the mesh, 
and maggots come out clean at the end with no sawdust or maize and then we transfer them onto the riddle similar to what we do with the casters. Good bait goes through and then we're left with the, the dead bait on top and then we have nice clean bait uh, for the customers to use. Well now, now the bait's clean, uh, this is ready to sell. And then to keep the bait fresh, um, we use either maize or um, sawdust. This is maize. Uh, the maize is a bit softer on the bait, makes it feel a bit nicer. Uh, also makes the bait look a little bit bigger than what sawdust does. But in the winter time, sawdust is preferred because it retains the heat. So it helps to keep the bait moving a little bit in colder temperatures. In the summertime, maize keeps cooler than sawdust because it doesn't retain the heat. Uh, therefore, your maggot should last a bit longer. But the maize needs to be changed about every two days because of the ammonia the maggots excrete. So uh, that's what makes it smell. So here's the, the live bait all clean. Um, there's another tip. If you've got any maggots left over and you don't want to turn the caster, is these ones here have been frozen. Now, dead maggot is a brilliant attractor like pellets and particles into your, uh, when put in your swim because they don't crawl into the seal. Especially the carp, three dead maggots on a sort of 18 or a 16 hook sometimes will pick you out more carp than fishing with a pellet or a piece of corn. I feel that the uh, fish might think the maggots have been in the water longer and therefore they drown so they feel safe in picking, up, picking them up rather than live ones. So a good tip is whatever maggots you've got left don't throw them away in the day, put them in a bag and freeze them up and then you can use them on another trip. Okay well here's the, the bait for you to go fishing today um, so let's hope you catch some fish now. Are they guaranteed these ones not? Guaranteed to catch the angler. They caught me, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, have a good day. Cheers, thank you very much. Well, we've got the bait from Nigel to tackle up, and we're here at Hong Grange Reservoir. Very small, it's only three quarters of an acre, but it's a highly stocked, intensive day ticket fishery. That means there's a lot of fish in it. Always a relief to get that first one in the net. Look, a nice common. Oh, hook fell out there. There's a hook. Was that lucky or what? Just there. Beautiful. Let's put him on the mat. Take a look at it. Well, that's a fat one. Tell me that fish is in bad condition. That's absolutely superb condition, that one. Look at this one, if you bend it down, it'll get quiet. Superb that one. Common, beautiful tail, the orangey colour to the tail, lovely golden flanks, big scales, not a scale out of place. I don't know where he's going to go about six plus, something like that. Beautiful fish. But a one more. Nice common, let's get it back. 